I'm Jay Chogat, Senior Editor of Clean Trucking, and we are at the 2024 ACT Expo in Las Vegas. Behind me is the Nikola 2.0 Battery Electric Class 8 Semi Truck. And today we are going to be speaking with Steve Gursky, CEO of Nikola, and Ryan May, the Head of Software for Nikola. So Steve, what is the Nikola BEV 2.0? Nikola BEV 2.0J is a refreshed version of our prior BEV, second generation. It's got new and improved software, it's a bunch of new features, lighter weight, new battery. So we think it's pretty exciting and it's hitting the market as we speak. What is new about the battery packs in this truck? The battery packs in this truck have a similar system to the fuel cell trucks, so they share a lot of the same systems, same components, frankly, same battery as the fuel cell trucks, so we're able to scale it more efficiently. Have any of the key specs changed, such as range, horsepower, torque, charging time? So range is very similar, weight is slightly lighter, torque is very similar as well. A lot of the features of the truck are similar, except for the electronic enhancements, the HMI, some of the Bluetooth features, and the weight is somewhat lighter. Are you dedicated to the cab over design? Won't aerodynamics be more important as battery electric and fuel cell electric become more viable options? Sure, we think about new cab designs all the time. Right now, our goal is to put these cab overs in the market, see what we get out of them, but on a future roadmap, we certainly think a lot about uh, future aero designs. All right, Ryan, thank you for being with us. Could you show us the software in this Nikola 2.0? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll, I'll start. We have a, a mobile key functionality on our, on our mobile app. That's what we'll kind of use to access the vehicle here. Um, you know, there's some key functions available on the app itself, but ultimately it functions as a key. So you can come here, um, tap your name, and it will uh, log you into the vehicle ready for service. You know, starting here at the instrument cluster, there's a lot of functionality baked in, but we're really kind of looking to simplify things for the driver. So, you know, you've got your normal telltales across the top, and we have a, a driver information section that'll populate certain faults or, or conditions that the vehicle's in the driver needs to be aware about. But we really want to keep that very clean for the driver. So the intention there is really demonstrate the, the capability they have left in the truck, whether that's regen level they have with the truck or the power they have available to tap when they uh, are accelerating. And also just kind of the, the normal things you look for in a truck, you know, brake air pressure and, and uh, the temperature of the vehicle. Now, what sets the software apart from those of other vehicles from other OEMs? I think a big differentiator that's kind of just clear as you, as you come in is we have two enormous screens, a 12-inch and a 17-inch screen here. Um, it's a lot of screen real estate. There's a lot of that we can do with this. Um, really, we want to keep it simple, keep it big. Um, so here you have some certain key functions available you know, for the truck, your fog lights, your camera feeds. We have a kind of an energy page um, that will show you uh, your capa energy capacity remaining, your range remaining. Um, you know, your tele telephone connection um, via Bluetooth. Um, we have onboard diagnostics that's a pretty uh, different from a lot of other OEMs. There's, there's not a third party tool you plug in to the OBD port. It really is uh, all onboard diagnostics. So you can view faults, you can run routines, all here from this screen. Um, you know, normal vehicle settings, uh, traction control, diff lock, things like that are available here that you'd expect. Um, you know, not, nothing too wild there, pretty standard. Um, Connectivity, you know, we have, we have, you can take, take the truck to Wi-Fi or, or with Bluetooth for um, hands-free calling or to play music. Buttons across the bottom uh, for, you know, your climatization of the vehicle. So uh, my settings are set to, to Celsius, but uh, driver profiles follow them from truck to truck. So they can select Celsius and, and as they go to the next truck, they'll, they'll have their settings also in Celsius. I actually, I also noticed that you have your HVAC controls as a part of the screen. Was it always going to be a part of the screen or going to have more traditional knobs like you see in some passenger vehicles with uh, big touch screens as well? Sure, yeah. I mean, ultimately, I think there's definitely a split between people and, and opinions there, right? It's, it's very controversial, you know, big screen versus physical controls. I do think there's value in physical controls. Um, for us, it made a lot of sense to just bring it all into the screen. The controls didn't fit the dashboard with this screen size. So um, really we said, hey, you know, we want to bring kind of the screen size. There's some functions that um, we're working on that uh, really take advantage of the screen from a, um, an ELD perspective and driver interface perspective that we're looking at. And so we wanted to leave that open. And so part of that was really making sure we put as much as we can in the screen and give ourselves as much real estate as we could. So Ryan, can you show us some of your class eight specific routing functionality? Yeah, sure. I'll go through here and we'll walk through a route together. Um, you can specify whether or not you have a trailer attached. 
um, the trailer height, the trailer width, and the trailer weight. So we use that information to, to route you to, to make sure you're not going under, under bridges that are too low, um, make sure that your vehicle profile fits, fits the road you're driving on. You can also specify hazmat uh, loads. So if, if there are certain hazardous materials you're carrying, um, we can make sure and route you uh, on the appropriate roads, make sure you're not going on, on a road you shouldn't be going on. Um, we'll go ahead and skip that for now. Um, and you can see on the map here, there are certain roads that are marked that you can't go on. Um, those are pretty clearly indicated on, 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 the, on the map. Um, just, just for driver information, just so they're aware of kind of, hey, no hazardous material along, on this route, um, no trucks are allowed along, along this route. Um, you know, this, we're in a perfect location here in Las Vegas where you have two of these roads kind of together. But, um, but yeah, the idea is to just give the driver as many tools as they can when they're carrying the load. They shouldn't have to think about you know, where, they're, where they're driving. They should just be able to follow the navigation, uh, get to their route safely. For more on Nikola, watch these two videos on your screen right now.